Power Book 3, Season 1, Episode 1, entitled Back in the Day. We'll get into it right after this. So finally is here, Power Book 3, Raising Canaan. Uh, got off to a start today. Had a couple of rough patches, but overall, thought this was a very decent episode. Uh, did what it was supposed to do, so... We got Makai Curtis as Kanan Stark, obviously. Uh, Patina Miller, she uh, plays Raquel Thomas. That's Kenan's mom, also called Rock. Uh, Malcolm uh, plays Lulu, who is Kenan's dad. I mean, Kenan's uh, uncle. Uh, you know him from Power. Uh, he was in the first season. Uh, Haley Kilgrove plays Jukebox. Omar Epps is Howard, the detective. And London Brown plays Marvin Thomas, who was Kenan's other uncle and also Jukebox's dad. Uh Joey Badass is in here as well. He plays Unique, who is a rival drug dealer. Uh, you got Lovey Simone, who plays Keenan's love interest. She was on Greenleaf, you might remember her. And uh, it, got a whole, it got a who's who of people in this uh, show. Um, it starts off with a young Keenan in the park uh, getting beat up and bullied by some kids. Uh, then you get he goes home, runs home after getting beat up. Uh, his mom sees this. And, uh, you know, right then and there, I think that was the birth of the Kenan that we saw or will see uh, in future episodes or that we have saw in power. Uh, she puts some batteries in the sock, tell him goes to the playground, tell him to go back to the playground. She drives him up there and tell him handle this business. You know, like we listen, you will you will start. You're not going out like that. Uh, and he goes back and handles his business. And 50 Cent narrates this, which I love. Uh, he says right then and there. My name rang bells, and it's been ringing ever since. I'm like, ooh, bars. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty dope. Uh, and I like how they got this, these these characters of a young 50 Cent that look, actually look like they could be 50 Cent when he was younger. Because if you look at old 50 Cent pictures, he was actually a little chubby when he was younger. Um, after that, you see, uh, you see it goes into um, it goes into a transition where now Keenan's in high school. Uh, and then you get introduced into jukebox. Uh, you get introduced into different characters that are in his cipher now. Uh, he has a best friend named um, what is that guy's name? Uh, light skinny kid. Um, famous. He has a guy named Famous. He hangs with he, he hangs with jukebox. It's another kid named um, I think D Nice or D D something. Uh, but this is like his main crew. Uh, mainly jukebox famous. And Kanan, those are like the main three that hang out. Uh, Jukebox, obviously, is, uh, you know, she's a lesbian, I believe, or coming into her sexuality as uh, being a lesbian. And she's seeing some some white girl over at a, a high uh, prestigious school over in, um, I forget where it was located. Uh, but that's her pretty much her arc of the episode, coming into her sexuality. Not the Jukebox that we know from... Uh, you know, the, the later seasons or how she's going to be when she's older. Because uh, I believe she's a cop, right? She is a cop. She winds up becoming a cop, which is weird. Uh, but, listen, I see a lot of similarities in uh, Mary J. Blige's uh, Monique character or Monet character that I see in Rock. But I think Rock is executed a little more better than uh, Monet because I just think uh, Mary J. Blige had a little acting curve, and I people gave me flack for that. Like, oh no, you dissing the queen? I was like, well, so I just don't think she portrayed. It. I think this is how it was supposed to be executed, how she did. Uh, but uh, Patina Miller is a more prestigious actress than Mary J. Blige, so that's maybe that's why. Um, <clears throat> but I think she did a good job. Um, I don't think she, I don't think she has the, she doesn't have the shrewdness. Uh to be in this this game like she should be you know what i mean like and you've seen that with um when unique talk to her but let's we'll talk about that uh it's pretty much um a drought on the streets right now and that they're coming out from and they're figuring out how to sustain uh so you got people just doing shit on their own without permission it's kind of a free fall and uh they're trying to maintain hold of their particular territory and not intrude on uniques, but it's happening. But and it's all because of just it's not really no product going on. You know, everything's stepped on. It's not, which is crazy because this is coming out of uh, the 80s. But I remember I know the Reagan era kind of like 
put an end to a lot of stuff and made it higher for people. So maybe that's why they're reeling from that because, you know, the, the, the mid eighties, late eighties, that's when the crack epidemic was prevalent. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but I'm thinking that I'm guessing that's what happened. This is during the Reagan era, uh, where he was putting a lot of into this shit, you know? Uh, but, um, Listen, I like how they did the the wardrobe. I like when it first came on and it's playing L Cool J to represent 1985 my radio because that's when it came on. And then when it was 1991, they was playing Tribe Called Quest. I'm like, yo, that's dope because they. I like when they keep accurate with the uh, the music. Cause I remember watching um a show uh about the Biggie and Tupac murders on U. It was on USA. And uh, it was supposed to be like 97, and they went to somebody's house. It was Bokeem Woodbine and somebody else in the scene. And they're playing uh, Young Jock is Going Down. And I'm like, dude, that song wasn't even out then. That song was nowhere near completion. Young Jock probably was about five at that time. <laughs> so I'm like, yo, they, how, do you, how do you mess that scene up? But So I appreciate the fact they're getting the wardrobe uh, right. They getting the soundtrack right, and also they getting the verbiage right. They getting the slang right. Uh, they getting the five percenter language right. They getting the New York slang right. Yo, B, uh, that's one thing I will say about the early '90s, uh, late '80s. That 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 swing, that that swag, that that language, that verbiage was everything, man. The the high top phase with the the furs on, the jury, like these people got flea back then, boy. People got flea. They flea was different from our flea. They was more dressed up type flea. You know what I mean? Had some slacks on with a nice Versace shirt or something like that with a fur on. Uh, ours is, you know, Balenciaga's or Balmain or something with some skinnies and some 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 designer shoes. It's a little different, but I like I like I liked it that man. They they nailed that to the T. Uh, Keenan is um. He, his mom wants him to go to straight and narrow. She has big plans for him. So she's trying to get him to be in this this nice school downtown. Uh, but he doesn't want to do it, obviously, because he's used to – he's a product of his environment now. He he wants to be near his friends. He don't really want it, but he's super, super smart. Uh, and I like the fact they showcase that, you know, because that's how it was showcased in power, too. Like, if you – that was the thing with him and Ghost. He was outsmarting Ghost in a lot of ways, and, and I was – Obviously, uh, in the end result, Ghost wind up outsmarting him. Uh, but Keenan was super smart, man. Uh, they don't they don't let him seem like he was a dummy or not. The thing is, his mom's trying to keep him from the streets, and he's trying to veer towards the streets. You know, the same thing like Tariq and uh, Ghost situation. But she is more she more kind of like on the fence about it. But at this, she really wants the best from she she wants him to be something with his life, but. You got you become obviously what you were around, and that's that's what's gonna happen, obviously. Uh, so um, we see that um, I guess Unique uh, winds up driving by, and I'm letting off a warning sign. Uh, it's just been a lot of tension between them when they standing outside. Uh, we get introduced into uh, Famous's sister, I believe her name is Jessica. Uh, I think she's going to be like an integral part of the show. I think she's going to end up wind up talking to um, uh, Kenan's uncle, uh, Lulu, I believe. So they drive by and then he uh, he covers and protects her. And um, she's like, nobody ever did that for me. That that was kind of cheesy. I ain't going to lie. That's it. That part was cheesy as hell. I was just like, OK, here we go with this bad writing. <laughs> Cause it's not the acting, it's the writing. It, it, you only could get, you only could execute what you got to do to work with. And I'm like, okay, here is bad scene, but I, it was tolerable. But I was just like, oh, nobody's ever did that for me. You're like you get shot at all the time. Is somebody supposed to be do that? Like what's going on? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you also got Lovey Simone, who is Keenan's love interest, and she's dating some dude named um, what do you say this dude name was? It was it was some kind of old school nineties name, power discipline or something. That's like and he's working for Unique, and he sees that. And uh, uh, Jukebox is like, yo, won't you? How long has she been curving you? He's like the first grade. She's like, yo, won't you go talk to her? And she, he's like, nah, I'm gonna just keep dreaming like this. <laughs> so that was kind of that was funny. 
so when when the shooting happens, they're trying to they're telling Rock they need to uh they need to strike back. And Rock is like, yo, we we ain't really got the we can't be going to war right now. We really ain't got the the resources or the power. And you know, obviously war uh cause you not to make no money. You know, if you, you can't have your people out on the corners doing what they're supposed to do, if they gotta constantly be watching their back. And if you do got them, you're gonna have to hire security or muscle. And then it's just a how it's just like Fabulous said, beef is only good when you're in the burger business. Um so they trying to push back uh her older brother um Malcolm Marvin is he's kind of a hothead. He's he he ain't really the sensible one. Lulu is sensible, but he's also uh he also a savage too. So he's trying to he he they like, yo, we gotta think this out. Um but Marvin's like, yo, we gotta we gotta strike back. Um, they ultimately wind up meeting, having to meet. You meet uh, unique for the first time, and Joey. Listen, Joey Badass is is a he. Don't, he not getting the props he do, and I see a bright future for this young man. Every role he's in, uh, and I seen him in a variety of roles. He played uh he played Jizz on the Wu Tang. He also just played in a show on Netflix, where it's like a Groundhog's Day type of, type of deal. Um, and then he's playing it like this dude is talent. He's an extremely talented kid, man. Shout out to him. Uh, we got to start giving Joey Badass more rooms, uh, more roles uh, to to broaden his horizons. But dude, he he executes it, man. He, he play he plays this character who's supposed to be like handsome, charismatic, uh, but ruthless, fly type dude, and that's what he embodies. He embodies that to the to the T. He's part, he's the biggest uh, hustler in Jamaica Queens. He's kind of reminiscent of like a Supreme. Um, I'm guessing who that that's whose character is based off. Uh, yeah, he 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 he's telling it. He he got the verbiage right, and he's like, you know, he's a he's a native New Yorker as well. So he's like, uh, he's telling uh, Rock that he took over. I guess you find out that his brother wind up doing life in jail, so he wind up taking over the business. And he's true, but he's fair. And he he's like, listen, you know, uh. You got your peoples on this one block that's supposed to be, uh, you got to, we got to communicate. Like, you got, you just got your peoples on this block. You ain't communicate that with me. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is. Like, I guess they both got certain areas that they supposed to frequent. And I guess it was an area that was kind of left unopen. And Rock was just like, all right, we're going to put our people there. And he like, yo, you got to communicate with me. And she just says, well, you took a shot at me. So I'm going to give you this, this, this. And then you take this and this and this box. And he like, all right, that's cool. And then he walk away talking. He's like, yo, y'all like that coat, blah, blah, blah. She let me tailor it. So I'm guessing he owns a tailoring shop too as a front. Um, but Keenan, this isn't relayed to Keenan because he's not in the know. He's not, he's just supposed to be a school dude. He's supposed to be just focused on academics. This doesn't get relayed to him. It comes back that uh, the guy that was fucking with his girl was uh hustling on one of the blocks that he thought his mom still had so he goes to an extreme he you know, i'm like listen i didn't even know they were shooting like this back then like in 91 i know people i know they was putting that murder game down but i thought it was uh certain circumstances but uh he, his man gave him a pistol and keenan went ahead in his business and i was surprised i'm like damn the first episode like what the fuck like damn, they, he put in work the first episode. I thought it was gonna be a lead up to this. And this man caught his first body in the first episode. I'm like, man, that's crazy. I, hey, they moving fast. I like it. They moving along. They moving along fast. Uh, but then he finds out that the block the dude was on, his mom gave it to him. like. So he he pretty much took somebody's life for no reason. And then he runs home. He got the blood on his shirt. I'm like, this dude is making all the kinds of rookie mistakes. And then how they handle it at the house was not like how Ghost and uh, um, what's her name? Tasha handled it when Tariq got his first body. Like, yo, you got to burn your clothes. You got to do this. Like, they was covering up. They was just kind of cool with it. But I know it was 91 is back in the day. They ain't have forensics and all that shit like they got now. But um, Unique hears about it, and he goes... He tries to get Keenan while he's taking out the trash. Why she let him take out the trash, I don't know. Uh, but she was watching him, and they try to shoot at him. She busts back. Uh, that's when you get interest. That's when you get introduced to Omar Epps' character, uh, Howard, and um, you see that he'll be, he'll be uh, kind of like the um, 
I'm trying to think of what character that was constantly. It would be like the Valdez or the uh the, that one cop that that one lawyer that was super annoying. Um it'd be like him. He's just gonna be like the annoying character trying to catch them out there, blah blah blah. I'm like, look at Omar Epps, old ass. Uh yes, he has a detective as well. Um Yeah, that was I wasn't interested in him. Uh it was uh this one particular scene where um they go to this club that I guess um, Lulu is dist- or there. I'm not even say Lulu, but Rock's organization is distributing cocaine out this club, and they go to meet up with the the guy, the owner of it. He's not there, but I guess his wife is there or his um, his uh, I don't know his worker. I don't know what she was, but she was getting fly at the mouth at Rock. Rock was about to beat that ass, uh, and she tells him like, "Yo, you ghetto bitch." We don't want that stepped on ass uh, work you got. <laughs> and he like, yo, trying to smooth her over and shit. And dude at the bar, the bartender winds up trying to kick it with Rock. And then uh, she takes him for it. Like, she let him go on a date. But when they were on a date, that's when Keenan wind up getting into that situation. But um, to handle her for a disrespect, dude, they put, her, they put her dog in a fucking microwave. I'm like, yo, what kind of savage shit is that? I'm, I'm surprised they even showed that shit on TV. They put yo, that's some savage shit. They put their dog in a microwave and turned the shit all the way up and cooked the motherfucking dog. Now that's a motherfucking hot dog for your ass. Uh yeah, that was crazy. Um that was crazy. Uh Unique and Rock wind up meeting up once again. And uh he pretty much tell her, like, I want all the blocks now. That's the only way that's gonna go away. And he he explained to her, he's like, yo, the difference between me and you, like he's like, yo, my man over there, that's my right hand man. I got love for him, I care about him. But he was like, he ain't come out of my body, so I ain't got no attachment to him like that. He like, yo, Keenan came out of your body, so that's always gonna be a weakness for you. That's gonna be a crutch. And he was, she was like, yo, I don't want him in this. And he was like, yo, whether you knew it or not, uh, cause I guess his, I think his pops died, and then his step pops wind up getting killed at the beginning. He says pop, step pops died a year later, so and they didn't show that, but. He was the one that Step Pops was the one that put his mom in the game, I, I believe, or he made sure she was straight. Uh, and I don't know if he was referencing him or his actual pops. I think he was referencing him, though, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but he was like, yo, Keenan was born into this shit. He was born into this shit. So he was already into this shit before he was even born. Like, he was he already into this shit. And I think right then and there, Rock was kind of like, all right, man, I'm going to just. Shit, she was she was leaning on it because during the murder, after the murder happened at the house, she told him to go to his room, and he's like, "Yo, I, I'm not a kid no more. You can't tell me what to do." And he was like, "Yo, I want to do this. Like, this is what I want to do. You know what I mean?" Like, she went up to the room, was talking to him. He's like, "Yo, how, if something happened to you, what I'm supposed to do? You know what I mean?" He's like, "I gotta be here to protect you." And she was just like, yo, I don't need you to protect me. If something happened to me, you're going to live with your grandma. And I think that's foreshadowing because obviously in real life, that's what happened. 50 Cent Mom was a hustler. She wound up getting killed. And he went to stay with his grandma. Uh, so this this has bits and pieces of the real 50 Cent's life in it. Um, and I don't know if that's going to happen in real I don't know if that's going to happen on the show. I hope not because I really like Rock's character. Uh, I think she's dope. Um but I, she leans on that, man. At the end of the episode, you see her her, uh, her showing Keenan how to bust that gun. You know what I'm saying? And you can see he loving that shit. Like, he, he really into that shit. That's that's how it be, man. That's how it be. Motherfuckers, they watch their parents. And being in this lifestyle, man, they wind up being in the lifestyle, too, man. And a lot of people just, they love it. They in fact, with the street life. And they love that shit. And I think that's just uh, where he was at with it. Um... Overall, I thought this was a great episode. I mean, I'm not going to say great, but I thought it was a decent episode, man. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it. It's definitely a different tone than the other powers. That's what I like about it uh, because it's a prequel. Uh, I can't wait to see how we get introduced into Ghost and Tommy. So that's something to look forward to. Uh, and I can't wait to see the development where it goes from there because Keenan, you already know how Keenan was as an adult. Uh, he was a, a savage. So seeing him now. He already he already got the savagery in him. He just got it in him. It's just built. It's just in, embedded in his DNA. So um, we're going to see how this story plays out. We already know how Jukebox uh, turns out and how she winds up uh, going along with, with 
his situation, but we don't know what happened to his uncles or his mom. So we don't know if they still around or not. More than likely they wind up getting killed or locked up. Uh, we don't, they don't, they don't bring him up, but this is his story to, sh to show everything, how it happened, man. Let's just stay tuned. Um, post your comments below. Let me know what you thought about this episode. If there's anything I left out, leave it in the comments below. And, uh, as always, peace, love, and prosperity. I am the Black Abstract One.